I hope you are doing well, sir. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm actually in Tamale. Um, I'm, I'm here to give a talk to some young leaders mm. in a, a college called Savannah International Academy. Okay. 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 Wish you the best in that endeavor. Uh, Thank you very much. But th these are terminologies you know very well. The, the cash waterfall system. And then what the minister is now suggesting. Because the last time the ECG was asked to provide the accounts, they operate. They provide so many accounts. The accounts were a lot. So we want to reduce it to one single account so that we are ensuring that the money that ECG gets, what is supposed to go into the cash waterfall system, goes in there. Explain to us how all this was supposed to work because we understand all this idea of cash waterfall started at the John Rabadi Mahaba. What was the idea? Well, the idea was we needed a project to be financed and the project was the Sankofa Jinyami project, the gas project. Uh, GMPC by uh, providing gas to the power sector would become the single largest entity, one entity to be paid from your electricity bill because power. Um, the gas you use as a fuel to generate power outside Akosombo uh, was going to constitute almost 30% of your electricity bill. Um, and as such, GMPC would need, would, would need some assurity, or rather the people who are going to finance the project, the World Bank, uh, ENI, Vitor and their financial institutions all wanted some um, assurance that they will be paid for the gas. And as such, we came up with a mechanism called the cash waterfall in which all revenue from ECG will be put into an account and there will be a distribution. So that is what a cash waterfall is. It's a simple mechanism where all revenue of um, ECG goes into an, an account and uh, that money is then cascaded through a mechanism, an agreed mechanism. Most likely fuel gets paid first, then the next fall, the next stage of the waterfall, it'll be generation will be paid and then the next uh, payments will go to the grid, and the last payments will go to the the disc of the, the distribution companies like ECG and Netco. So that was the idea. And the reason why this cash waterfall was important is without fuel, without working capital, you can have all the plants, equipment, the grid, and you will not have electricity. And that is what Doomso is about. Doomso is about you either not having enough capacity or you not having enough um, funds to purchase the fuel that is needed to generate the electricity. If you have a generator, you know what I mean. You may have spent the money and, and have a generator in your house, but if you don't have money to buy your diesel or your petrol to put into the generator, you will have no electricity. And as such, the project needed to be financed and because the World Bank was given its largest ever guarantee of 700 million to the project, 500 million going to GMPC, going to the banks that will support the financing of the, the purchase of the gas. If GMPC failed to purchase, they will rely on the banks to do that. And um, 200 million going to Vitor to support, to their banks to support um, the financing of the project. So this was this whole cash waterfall was a solution to ensure that fuel will be paid for. And as such, everybody in the sector, everybody in the value chain, that is if you produce, um, if you're a generator, you'll be paid. If you are the grid, like grid code, you'll be paid. And if you're the distribution company, you'll be paid. But all this premises on the fact that the disc of ECG and NETCO would be efficient in the collection of the funds. We knew at that time that ECG was not efficient. We knew there were transmission losses. And as such, the World Bank also, working with uh, MIDA um, and a few other uh, entities like uh, the Millennium Challenge uh, Fund, gave, gave, were made some money.
money available to ECG to fix their inefficiency problems. However, that money never did get spent because there was a scheme to bring in a company called PDS to um, handle um, the operations and collections of funds for ECG, which never materialized. And the Americans took their money back, which was almost about $200 million. So that did not help us in fixing ECG. Now, when we talk about the single account, uh, we, need, we need to be just very clear. ECG collects money in various regions in the country. All that money should then be channeled by those banks and rural banks who collect money, Momo and all of that who collect money, into a single account. That means at the end of the day, all the money will be swept from all the other bank accounts into one particular bank account, which is which we collect, which we call the collection account. So that will be one account. But ECG may still be operating their 60 odd accounts, but there will be instructions, irrevocable instructions given by ECG's management, which will be approved by their board and initiated by the Minister of Energy and the Minister of Finance through a cabinet initiative to ensure that ECG complies with that. Now, this is an area where you have to have good board members to make sure that there's good governance going on. ECG has not, my understanding, complied with it, and the minister is now going to make them comply with it. But this has to have been done years ago. The cash waterfall mechanism was to be in place after ENI started producing the gas. That means that it should have been in place in 2017. We are in 2024, a few months to elections, and we knew that if this cash waterfall mechanism did not come through, we would not be able to meet payments to all the sector. Unfortunately for us, we, have, we now have debt of almost 18 billion Ghana cities owed in the sector. GMPC owes its banks, which is backed by the World Bank guarantee of 500 million, almost $485 million. It owes HSBC and Standard Chartered Bank. It has owed them for almost one year and over. It's in their financials in 2023. GMPC also owes ENI almost $200 million. They may have paid some since uh, I last checked a few months ago. And they continuously owe ENI over $40 million every month. So this debt is piling up. And ECG is only collecting maybe about 60% of all its billings. ECG is to collect almost 2 billion Ghana CDs a month. And they are not collecting that. They are not collecting the 2 billion Ghana CDs a month. So if they do not collect 2 billion CDs, Ghana CDs a month, and they're only collecting 1 billion Ghana CDs a month, there is going to be a shortfall to people who are going to be paid. ECG have been very clever in the past. They pay themselves first, which is almost about 30% of the total payment. And then the remaining 30% that they have collected, they then decide who to pay, whether to pay for the gas, or whether which comes from Nigeria, ENI, and uh, the, the Tolu fields, the Jubilee fields, and the Ten fields, or they use the money to pay Gridco, or they use the money to pay VRA and the other IPPs. The IPPs debt has also been piling up because payments have not been made. So there has been bad management supervised by an inept Ministry of Energy. In this area, hmm. uh, and I'm sure you'll be monitoring the tussle between the ECG and the PRC over the management of the cash waterfall system. From everything you've read of the P from the PRC reports, what needs to change if they are to succeed with a cash waterfall system? Well, first of all, PRC needs to do a better job in ensuring that the entities are reducing their losses. PURC is the regulator. 
It is just not a price setting organization. It is the regulator in this sector. And we have known that there have been a lot of inefficiencies by ECG, by Gridco, in, trans in uh, transmission and distribution of the electricity. ECG also have commercial losses where they are not um, collecting enough money from their um, clients, the, the people they supply electricity to. There's also a lot of theft in the system, which ECG should have put in a lot of uh, mechanisms to be able to detect the theft and curtail it. So PURC's job, the main job of PURC in regulating the uh, sector, they have failed. Now, P now, PULC is in a battle with ECG on only one aspect of this whole thing, which is the cash waterfall mechanism payment to um, the various uh, entities. But if PULC was to invoke its regulatory authority and ensure that ECG spends money in the right area to curtail the losses, then there will be a better... Uh, collection mechanism, and there'll be more money to be distributed in the cash waterfall. The problem is that if we follow the cash waterfall mechanism as it has been in as it was intended, ECG may not even receive any money because ECG will be one of the last people to receive the money in the cash waterfall. You see, the cash waterfall is not, uh, you know, a, a paper sulu. Uh, sharing of, of the money that arrives. It's, it's, I get paid first, you get paid second, he gets paid third, and the last person gets paid fourth. There are, there are many um, people who are trying to change the cash waterfall to mean that you will be paid on a pro rata basis, which is also, it looks, it looks fair, but from the fuel perspective, from the person who has paid, who has supplied you the fuel, he doesn't want to be paid 40% or 60% of what he has supplied you. He has to be paid 100%. And the problem with fuel is that it is financed mainly by the financial institution, the bank. And a bank would want you to extinguish an old loan before you take a new loan for working capital. That is how banks work. And if you don't extinguish the old loan, you would not be given a new loan because you will be in default. And when you are in default, they will not give you new working capital to sell the gas to uh, uh, ENI, uh, sorry, to um, ECG, to, to the IPPs to produce the, um, the generation of the power. So the, the issue has to do with, one, ensuring that ECG is collecting as much as it is built Government is also supposed to pay its portion of the amount that ECG has billed them. Government was supposed to pay about 200 million Ghana cities into ECG's account on a monthly basis since August. Government has failed to do that. So government itself, as Ministry of Finance, is responsible for part of the problems we are facing. I see. Then... Would you say that system has failed? Or there's, it, it can still be... <laughs> there's a way of rescuing it. Well, there's a way of rescuing it, but it's not going to be a palatable way for Ghanaians. The way of rescuing it is, one, ECG has to, first of all, force... E uh, sorry, a few hours has to force ECG to invest money in fixing its shortfalls, its inability to collect enough of the revenue that it builds people. One, government will also have to make its payment. You see, in such a case, government will have to establish a standby letter of credit by Bank of Ghana that would make payments directly to ECG. ECG should not wait and go to a minister's office and ask him to make a payment. The payments should come automatically from uh, the government's bank, which is Bank of Ghana. Bank of Ghana should debit the account immediately, every month, for that $200 million to be done. That is the only way you're going to get discipline in this system. We are indisciplined. The government has shown that they are very indisciplined in making payments, payments to every sector. They are not paying the electricity, the electricity bill. 
Um, there's confusion as to who is going to pay it. Is, is the Minister of Finance going to pay it? Are the hospitals paying it directly? Are the schools paying it directly? This ambiguity is intentional. Yes, this is intentional ambiguity so that nobody is blamed. But the blame should lie with the Minister of Finance. After all, he was the one who, approved, who got that budget approved. And in that budget, if he's supposed to make electricity payments for the security services, for the hospitals, and for the schools, he has to make those funds available. You just don't budget without thinking of how you're going to finance the budget. Interesting. Uh, then, then there's the, do you think, and because there's a, now, it seems the government, it's uh, our spokespersons for Dr. Baumier campaign team are uh, fighting back. Do you think, do you believe that this is the main reason we are suffering from this recent outages? Well, the reason why, I don't know why they are fighting or whether they are fighting, but the problem is that, you know, you can't hide a problem like this for that long. And they have tried their best to hide this because, you see, they have not invested one megawatt into the power sector since they arrived. Any power that was produced or that, that was completed in the Athena was initiated by the John Dramani Mahama uh, uh, government. Every two or three years, you're supposed to add another 250 megawatts into the power sector. This has not been done. This was not done in the early 2000s during Kufour's time. And this has not been done in this regime of Nanado and Baumia. So it is obvious that we are going to have a capacity problem. We, they also have misused the funds of ESLA. Instead of using it to pay down some of the debt, they have diverted that fund, those funds as well. Um, the PR, PRMA, which is the Petroleum Revenue Management Act, has also been abused. There have been violations to the act itself. And um, all of those things, uh, the chickens are coming home to roost. Unfortunately, this is a time where we are approaching elections and somebody has to be blamed. Now, do you blame, you know, Baumia's boys or do you blame Nanado's boys? Well, that is an MPP issue. But we are watching. We have been through this. We inherited a, 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 a bad power sector from the Kufour regime in 2009 when our president, John Evans Atamios, realized that we did not have enough capacity. He realized that we had a financial problem. He put a team together to resolve it. Unfortunately, he passed away, and His Excellency John Mahama uh, took over and uh, resolved it by bringing emergency power plants and looking at a way for us to reduce the cost of uh, fuel. We were using crude oil at that time. So we expedited the SGN, the Sankofa Jinyami ENI-led project. We also built in Atwabo so that uh, um, we could process the gas from Jubilee. All of these things were initiated and completed in the His Excellency John Mahama's time. And as such, Doomsaw was resolved. We resolved Doomsaw in, in mid 2016. And we handed over a power sector that was working, that was efficient, that was getting better. One of the things that had to be done was fixing ECG. Unfortunately, instead of fixing ECG using the Millennium Challenge money, which is about $200 million, to fix ECG's collection problem and its commercial loss problem. They went about an extractive scheme of trying to bring a company called PDS who was not going to inject any of its own money into the system as envisaged. And uh, the Americans saw into this and withdrew their support. And as such, ECG has never been fixed since then. This is the problem we are facing right now. They have not, and because they are not paying the power sector, no investor is going to come and invest $300 million plus in a sector where it is bankrupt. It is, you are not able to pay your bills. Um, they will not be able to use their own equity, nor will they get the financial institutions to back them to do this. 
So we are in a very precarious situation right now. And as such, somebody has to be blamed. So the fighting you're seeing right now between PULC, between Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Energy, it may be a power play, but somebody has to take the flag. And the only person I know who should take the flag is the leadership of the NPP, the leadership of this government, and that is Nanado and Baumia. But there's been a recent request for the energy minister to resign, or uh, to be sacked. What do you think about that? Well, you remember that Honorable Kobra Donko resigned because he said himself that if he couldn't fix the problem within a certain date, he would resign. Although he had put everything in place to fix that problem, and that problem was going to be fixed at a later date, he honorably resigned. Well, if you have men of steel, men of conscience in this government, they will do the right thing. Well, in the meantime, let me read to you. This uh, comments made by Kodion Safwa Poku, who is a 2024 Manifesto Committee member on energy. Um, this is what he says. He says, stop buying into people's propaganda. There's a simple propaganda that all of you have bought into, which is this thing about government needs money to buy for. I'm asking which fuel does government need money to buy? You can't even tell me. He continues. Quote, you don't buy gas. You see, that is the problem. Sometimes there's a shortage of gas because of the light flow coming from Nigeria. So when we have less flow coming from Nigeria, or let's say Ghana gas has tripped and there isn't enough gas coming from there, you need liquid fuel to power some of these machines. And Sempa can use light crude oil. AXA can use HFO, and then a TTP plant can use diesel. So when people say that government doesn't have money to to buy fuel, they are saying that government doesn't have money to buy gas. We don't have to buy gas, cash, and carry. What they are saying is that we need money for the liquid fuel to supplement the shortage when there is gas shortfall. Government has money to buy gas. Government has not owe anybody before uh, they have to supply. Uh, well, so that, that's his essential response to the question of money to buy fuel. What uh, do you think? Um, I, 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 I don't know uh, on what basis anyone will make such a statement. It's either the person has no clue of the industry, he has no idea of the agreement in place for uh, the purchase of gas, from the operator ENI and from Jubilee and from GMPC. Maybe he has no clue about the indebtedness of GMPC to its banks, um, HSBC and Standard Chartered Bank, where about 485 million is owed. If you it took any time and looked at the financials of GMPC, you will see this amount there. Um, if you talk to GMPC now, you would know that they still owe that. If you go and check at the banks, you will still they still owe. Um, I'm sure if you go to the World Bank, because the World Bank has guaranteed this, the World Bank has reports that shows how much they owe. If you go to ENI and ask ENI how much GMPC owes, I'm sure you will know. So I don't know whether the person is speaking you know, uh, in a vacuum. Um, and, and he thinks that we don't pay for gas. We have to pay for gas. It's a commercial agreement between the Jubilee Partners, led by Tolo, and the ENI-led Sanko um, uh, Yami Gas Project. We buy gas every single month from them. Um, so I don't understand when he says we don't have to buy gas or pay for gas. Um, that is wrong. It needs to be corrected. Uh, we are paying over five hundred, or fifty million Ghana sorry, fifty million dollars every month for gas. Uh, this is what we buy. Mm. Uh, we have not paid for a long time. Um, we keep um, trip paying them from time to time when we get money. We pay them some. But like I said, if you have to collect over two billion Ghana cities and you collect only one billion Ghana cities or just above one billion Ghana cities to pay. Everybody in the value chain, somebody is going to suffer. And um, if you don't pay your fuel bill, the problem is that your credit lines from your banks will be exhausted. We, our credit line 
from HSBC and Standard Chartered Bank has been exhausted. He and I have been very patient with us, and we owe them maybe over four or five months of gas. Um, and gas, we don't owe them that much, but whenever we owe them, they, they stop the gas. So every month we may owe them $10 million or less. If we don't pay, they cut the gas. And then all, all of a sudden, we don't have gas in the uh, eastern part of, of the country. And as such, those people do not have any fuel to generate. Um, buying liquid fuel is a very foolish alternative if you have gas. So basically, because you can't pay for the gas, you go and look for liquid fuel. With what money? You have to use money to go and bring the liquid fuel. So for me, anybody who uses liquid fuel when gas is available, is either you have a scheme going that you make some money from the liquid fuel, or um, I, I, I don't really understand why you buy liquid fuel. I mean, when you have gas available, because gas is far cheaper. So why would you not pay for the gas? For them to continue giving you um, gas, then rather than go and look for liquid fuel and use it to um, uh, supply a few plants, and um, in, in a month you don't have any money again. So rather, I'd rather you continuously pay and gas, and they continuously supply you the 50 or 100 million BTU every month, uh, per day, every month rather than use the money and buy uh, liquid fuel, which would last maybe about 10 days. So it makes absolutely no sense why we are using money to buy liquid fuel. And it should be looked into. In fact, Parliament should ask the minister why we are buying liquid fuel. Uh, and then if they say it is to di divest our, our supply of, of, of uh, fuel for the uh, IPPs, it should be looked into as to why we divest it. Divest and one thing we should also do is to find out our total indebtedness and who do we owe and for how long do we owe these players. That is the suppliers of gas, that is the, uh, the IPPs that we haven't paid, including VRA as well. Gritco, how much do we owe? How was the last time we paid? Um, and how much, do, how much cumulatively are we owing all these sectors? And, e and ECG itself. Um, how much does ECG owe? I see. Um, Mr. Mold, thank you very much for speaking to us. It's a pleasure. I, I'm, I'm sorry it's been very technical, mm, but yeah. um, it, it needs to be explained so mm. that people don't, you don't have people just coming out and say, we don't have to pay for gas. That is a ludicrous statement. That is an uninformed statement, and that is a blatant lie. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. Uh, Mr. Alex Mould is former CEO of Ghana National Petroleum Corporation uh, speaking to us on this issue. Now, <laughs> this is the... So, the man says... And when I read the quote, I was, I was scandalized. He said, oh, that's what...